going on guys chat again I'm going to show you guys today how we do some some hand bombing vertically and how to butter the seam on pre-existing cured product okay so first off I'm gonna I'm gonna hand bomb the vertical um, and again simple techniques but consistency of mud all those things play a factor you can see that we have put our bonding coat on so we've slurried it and so this is nice and damp ready to go it, it's got our mechanical locking which is what we want we have our mud now is going to be the bomb like i told you before you need to make sure that you you periodically dip into the water the water allows for the for the mud to flop off what you don't want to see is i see a lot of guys and they take it and they do that that's not what you're looking for okay what we're looking for is a nice roll so i flop it like so So I'm not, I'm not slamming it on the wall. I'm just kind of flopping it out of my hands, okay? So, again, I kind of consistently throw it on. And Again, some little things to pick up on. You see this right here? So that little spot right there is where most people end up getting concrete burned because when you scrape it in the bucket, and as I'm scraping, it always seems to rub. That's the only place I get concrete burned, so just be aware, concrete does burn, um, and it can be nasty. So, you know, be careful when you are doing it. So, Keep your, your gloves clean, especially right there, uh, if you don't want concrete burn. So, all right, so I've got my mud on, all right? So now what I'm gonna do, just clean off my arm so that I don't get concrete burn, is trusty old pool trowel right here, bucket of water, sponge, okay? So I'm going to go in again, I'm going to seal my bottom, okay, so I'm just going to slick it all the way over, closing it up, boom, and I'm going to start to make my shape. Uh, this is the back side, so this is where um, we don't... There's not going to be a lot of people out here. So again, you can pick and choose your battles. If you want to go nuts, you can go nuts. Uh, we're going to keep it a little bit simpler on the back side here. Um, so I'm just going to get some basic shape. And again, I pull up just so I can get some hard edges on it. Okay. So this is wet mud over here. So it's a lot easier for me to go ahead and, and make the two connect. Now, let me just finish this one little area because it's wet mud on wet mud. And then I'm going to show you how we do it on dry mud. So say you left the project um, and you come back and it's a couple weeks. Okay, so we have this. This was done yesterday, but it's fully hard. You know, this is cured. So again, I've slurried it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my trowel, I'm gonna pull into it, and I am going to bond the two together by just slicking it. So, and this keeps it clean, um, which again is, is important, is keeping your work clean. But I slick and I kinda, you know, I'm, I'm putting quite a bit of pressure on because I really want it to get that, that bond from one to another okay so I just kind of roll with it again we can change the shape you know after the fact but I slick it in all right 
so you just kind of go down. If you don't want some boogers on there, you just get rid of them. Um, again, the more you have the trowel on you, on you, but you can see I've bonded that directly, okay? So now what I do is I go back, a little bit of water, so a sponge, water, um, I drain it all the way out, and then what I'll do is I'll kind of get it, because I do want some water on it, but I don't want it to be incredibly wet. And what I do is I go back, and all I'm doing is just kind of slicking the two together. So I just blend my seam, because the last thing you want is to go and do a project and people know where you started and you stopped. Uh, this also allows for the bond so that you don't get um, any cold joints, uh, allowing water to get in there. If you're in freeze-thaw areas, um, that can cause major problems, you know, allowing water to sit in there and then cracking and popping, you know, um, in the winter months. So again, I buttered my seam. So this is how I do it. I, I go hand bomb, butter my seam, my joint first. And then I go back, and for you verticals, um, we get a lot of questions. Like, you know, I showed you guys how to do some flat work. Now I'm going to show you how to do vertical work, okay? So the issues that occur typically are sagging, one and done. I can't emphasize that enough. You, you really want to do a minimal amount of troweling as you can. So really look at your shape, understand your shape, and say, okay, this is what I'm going to build based on what my shape is here. So what I see is I've got this little fracture here. I've got this. I've got a nice little thing right here. So I think I'm going to play that to my, you know, um, benefit right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of pull. I turn my trowel sideways. I don't turn it so you can slick or you can push. I'm going to push it at this point. So I'm going to leave the concrete open. Okay. And what I mean by open is this. You see all this that's open verse. If I close it now that right there closes it and you have more tendency of it to sag when it's closed. So I'm going to keep it open just until I'm ready to trowel out. So I'm building a little bit of shape here. I'm just going to push over a little bit. So again, I've kept it open. I see this is my other joint right here, but I want that to kind of come this way. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, kind of push a little bit and you can see this mud um, is still a little loose, which I hope that we have some failure so I can show you guys um, you know what the mud does and you saw when I touched this it really wants to sag I'm barely touching so I'm putting a little pressure and it wants to sag but at the same time good consistency it allows you to get some shape if you are experienced on the trowel and you can get it to, to hang one and done so we're gonna start over here and I'm gonna bring some shape like this and I'm just kind of going with it all right so this is going to be the back side of my rock. I'm gonna bring this like this, and I'm gonna. This is my rock. Now you guys can see it wants to move on me. So what I want to do is I really want to get this where I don't have to trowel it too much. So I'm just trying to close up some of my concrete. So again, just getting basic shapes some movement okay so nothing fancy but i've got some basic shape so boom 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 get this kind of closing things and i'm going to come back over on this and i'm going to do the same thing so i'm going to pull to kind of blend and this stuff is looser so this is going to be the stuff you want to be prepared to be one and done and again we're doing basic rock here so i'm going to take now and i'm closing it and as i close it i move around just to get some rock form once i'm ready to texture it 
I am not going crazy with pressure here, barely touching it, okay? Um, as I go, I'm just cleaning it, keeping sharp edges with some shape. And if you guys remembered earlier, I showed you, you know, how I was texturing. Um, we're going to use the same method, same texture brushes, um, get rid of some of our trowel marks, you know, and uh, make this look like rock. So over here, you know, here's that rock. So I'm going to go and I'm just going to carry it up like this see it want to sag so right here it really wants to sag on me but we're not gonna let it so we're gonna do it as minimal amount as we have to so come in a little bit of water on my trowel All right. And the more you guys do it, the better you're going to get. Um, I'm constantly learning, primarily made, you know, learning by making mistakes um, and putting myself around some of the best in the industry is key. Um, there's a lot of great veterans out there. Uh, they know who they are. I appreciate them. They uh, taught me everything that I know. And... Um, continue to teach you know they want to teach people uh, out there because there's still not a lot of people that a are willing to work nowadays and um, this is a niche industry that needs people this is a good industry to be in and if you put the time and effort into it you can you can have a really good career you know who wouldn't want to work at a zoo making enclosures you know um, it's uh, it's rewarding you know so we're over here, done, and we've buttered up our seams. Now we're just kind of giving a little bit of our, you know, pre-final trowel here. And um, I'm just closing up any of my open cells here. So that way I can texture it out. So um, I'm happy with that, pretty basic. Um, now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna grab my texture brushes and I'm gonna show you real quick how we texture it. Same two texture brushes, again, larger stipple, homemade. I start out again with the homemade one, a little bit of water, and I'm just going to touch it. You know, I don't go crazy. Again, um, you will have it happen. Mud's going to fall. If you have a fallout, you know, don't panic. Just wait and, and let some... You know, let it set up a little bit, go back to it, uh, you'll get it, you know. Um, typically you see it on overheads and, you know, and those are the worst. But, hey, you know what, part of the the, the deal when you're doing this is you, that's what you're going to get, okay. So, um, I put a little bit of texture really where we um, put our joint here so that we know we blend in. Um, and once I go and carve this that we don't have any defining areas where you can see a start and stop doesn't matter if it was a year ago and you're blending in as long as you do it right um you're not going to have any areas that you would know it was started at a certain point you should be able to do it where it's completely blended in but you can see when i touch this it definitely jiggles you know and um it moves so the more you move it is the more risk you're taking of it falling and again it's just more work 
if you make it fall barely touching this side right here because this is the side that was a lot loose oh there it goes okay so see this that little movement right there this is a good i'm glad this happened okay see this right here that right there is because the moisture inside of this is a lot looser okay that's why again the consistency of your mud is vital so the moisture inside of this and the solid structure behind the moisture is going to the back and it leaves like a moisture barrier so what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually show you okay so what i want to do is i'm going to cut this out a little bit all right and let's see if we can see okay come on over here mark see this area right here so that's a separation with the moisture in there okay easy fix nothing to be worried about um you know got a, got a heavy load of mud on it so what i'll do is butter it up so again i'm taking a big big chance of this whole thing wanting to sag so what i'm going to do is i want to be one and done and i'll texture it at a later date so let's see if i can keep it from sagging on me and i'm just going to push it up i'm putting a little bit of pressure on it i'll butter it in okay so boom and let's leave this like that okay i'm glad that happened this is how you fix it so a little bit of pressure and just wait 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 till the right time you know it's set up enough um you're not taking the chance so uh, i actually like the detail that uh ended up happening due to it so hey lessons learned right guys so again be aware of what you're, you're using how you're using it and when to do it and all that good stuff um again follow us on youtube at the design house it's d-e-z-i-g-n-h-o-u-z-e and stay tuned because we're going to keep these videos going thanks guys